Hello there. So I acquired quite a few books in the month of November. So many that it makes sense to film another haul video. In my defense though, I got most of these books used or otherwise at reduced price and one I even got for free. And in the last couple of weeks I also turned some of my old unwanted books and useless academic publications into new book buying budget. So it's really not like I'm flaunting my wealth at you or anything. I am going to start the show with three books that I have already read and which you've already seen in a recent wrap-up or which you are going to see very soon in an upcoming wrap-up. And the first of these is The Bell at Sealy Head by Patricia A. McKillop. This is a very sweet and humorous and slightly satirical fantasy story that is set in some unnamed country that is reminiscent of Georgian England or maybe Regency England, I'd say. And it is set in a sleepy seaside town in which a bell rings every day at exactly the moment the sun sets. It has been this way for hundreds of years and people are so used to the sound of the ringing of the bell that they hardly even hear it anymore, except for a few, and they are set on getting to the bottom of the secret. And the next book is Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the recently released first volume in her New Dreamer trilogy, which is a spin-off of The Raven Cycle, but I'd say it is very different in tone. I feel like anything at all that I could say about this book would be a major spoiler for The Raven Cycle, and if you haven't read The Raven Cycle, and if you are at all interested in it, then I'm not going to be the one who spoils that for you. And then I was glad to have found a scratch and dent copy of Schachnovelle by Stefan Zweig. Because this is an itty bitty thing, it's just 110 pages in this edition and the font is huge. And if you buy it new, they ask 10 euros for it, which I think is especially overpriced since it is out of copyright. In hindsight, it was worth hardly even the four euros that I paid for it. I've already talked about it in the first of my November wrap-ups. But I'm sure somebody will be glad to find it in the Little Free Library. So I bought Schach Novelle at a second-hand bookshop in a neighboring town, which is about a hundred times or so smaller than Cologne, but has a better used bookshop than this stupid city has. And in that same bookshop I I bought three more books. Um, I, the first one is How Late It Was How Late by James Kalman. I've been casually interested in this one for about seven years, ever since I saw it on a recommendations table in a Waterstones in Edinburgh. This sounds like it is quite a bit like train spotting only set in Glasgow. And that's a bit worrisome, but even though I I thought that train spotting was rather boring and repetitive, I did like the concept. So who knows, perhaps this turns out to be the better train spotting. Another book I got there is First Among Sequels by Jasper Ford. But when I was at home again I realized that I had made a mistake in buying that. I was under the impression that this was the second book in the Thursday Next series, um, the word sequel being in the title, but it seems like the sequels in the title are actually Thursday's Children, and book two in the series is, I think, lost in a good book. So I think I'm going to take this to the Little Free Library very soon, because while I enjoyed the air fair. I didn't think it was so good that I'm willing to put a lot of energy into hunting down used copies of the other three books that I would have to read to get to this one. Because you, um, it, it would be quite hard to find them used because you, uh, around here you don't just happen across books like these in used bookshops which don't exist anyway. Um, so I would have to put a lot of energy into it or I would have to pay full price and I'm certainly not going to do that to pay full price for for new copies. So little free library it is, I think. 
And at the same bookshop, I bought Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, because why not? <laughs> it was just two euros and who knows, perhaps I want to read it one day. And then I came across a scratch and dent copy of this, Everyone Brave is Forgiven by Chris Cleave. I had not heard of this before I saw it in the bookshop. It is a historical novel set during the Second World War, and it is about a handful of people who are all apparently in very different situations, all normal people, but all apparently very different ideology-wise. In all honesty, this is not something that I'm usually drawn to, but it's Chris Cleave. He is the author of Little B, which is also published under the title The Other Hand. And that was very impressive for me at the time that I read it. And he is also the author of the incredible feat of characterization and slow reveal that is the novel Gold. So basically I bought this just because I trust the author to basically blow my mind in some very unexpected way with this. And then I also worked on extending my James Baldwin collection, even though I have yet to read a second book by James Baldwin, I've still only read Giovanni's Room. But that one was so good that now I feel like I simply must have them all. And I found this cheap mass market paperback edition of Go Tell It on the Mountain. And I have to say, I really like mass market paperback editions, not just because they're cheap, but also because they are so practical and they they fit in every bag and you don't have to lug them around in basically their own suitcase like some of those trade paperback editions. I've always liked cheap mass market paperback editions. And the rest are all fantasy books again. This is The Queen of the Tearling by Erika Johansson. This is the first volume in an epic fantasy trilogy that sounds formulaic in many ways, but also just original enough that I might not be bored to death by it. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. And Beauty by Robin McKinley. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and apparently it, it inspired the Disney movie to a large degree, or at least there are significant similarities between the movie and the book, at least that's what I've heard. And then I have another book by Patricia A. McKillop, The Forgotten Beasts of Eld. This one, unfortunately, with rather hideous 1990s cover art. <laughs> This one's about a woman who lives in the mountains with a menagerie of magical creatures that she takes care of. Here's a dragon. <laughs> it doesn't. The description doesn't sound very thrilling, but apparently Patricia A. McKillop's books are quite low-key in general. Next I have Seraphina by Rachel Hartman. This is a middle grade fantasy about shape-shifting dragons who coexist with humans in the medievalish kingdom of Goroth. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's spelled G-O-R-E-D-D, -D, which reminds me of the Welsh state of Gwyneth, so I'm just assuming that it's pronounced similarly. Anyhow, um, like I said, Humans and dragons in the shape of humans coexist in this kingdom, but apparently the two species are always suspicious of each other and now tensions arise and intrigues ensue. And one of the few new books that I bought is this beautiful copy of A Skinful of Shadows by Frances Harding. This is a YA or middle grade fantasy novel or a historical novel with paranormal elements like in The Light Tree, but I think in this book they are a little bit more pronounced. This is set in England in the 17th century, which I find fascinating because that's not a period that we usually see a lot in historical fiction nowadays. Um, in the center of the story is a 12-year-old recently orphaned girl who has to deal with the impending civil war and who also happens to be possessed by the spirit of a dead bear. I'm so excited to learn what this is all about. And there is one more book which I have left until the end, although it is not fantasy, um, but, but I've left it until the end because that's the one that I got for free. I found it in the building in which I work. Somebody had put a few books that they wanted to give away on the stairs. Um, this is The Dressmaker's Child by William Trevor. 
This is one of those pocket penguins that Penguin released on the occasion of their 70th anniversary. These are all teeny tiny books, um, pocket penguins, and they are all comprised of excerpts of texts from larger books by the same author. Um, the only other pocket penguin that I have is King Arthur in the East Riding by Simon Armitage. Um, this is a collection of four short chapters from Simon Armitage's memoirs called All Points North. And these memoirs are written as a sequence of vignettes and um, four of these short vignettes have been collected into this pocket penguin. And this one, this pocket penguin, contains two short stories by William Trevor, The Dressmaker's Child, and the other one is um, The Piano Tuner's Wives. Um, to be honest, I haven't heard of William Trevor before, but because I was familiar with the pocket penguin series, I, and because the book was for free, I was curious about it. And that's it. These, I think, are all the books that I acquired in November. Please do let me know in the comments if you've read any of them, what you think about them, if you're interested in any of them, and I'll see you very soon with another wrap-up video, I think. Bye!